All right, this is pre-calculus. I'm on page 278, and this is 4.4, rational functions. Rational functions are not polynomial functions. They are rather the quotient of two polynomials. So whereas all of our polynomial functions were continuous at every point. Do you remember what continuous means? No breaks, no jumps, no sharp corners. Our rational functions are going to have breaks. They're going to be discontinuous. All right? Because we now are going to have variables in the denominator. There are three types of breaks or gaps. There are holes. I, I picked up a black marker, y'all. There are holes. There are vertical asymptotes. And there are horizontal asymptotes. Those are the types of breaks we're going to talk about today. And they all have to do with the denominators. All of them. All right, so look at, if you look at your sheet, or you can look at the bottom of page 279. This is the sheet that I'm talking about. Or if you look just on page 279, the domain, the domain of a polynomial. polynomial, domain is your x values, is typically negative infinity to positive infinity, right? Negative infinity to positive infinity is typically the domain. But there are two exceptions. What are the two exceptions? Do you remember the two exceptions to the domain? of a polynomial. One is the denominator. Zero. Cannot equal zero. That's what we're gonna deal with, with rational functions. That's where we're gonna have a hole in the graph, a vertical asymptote, or a horizontal asymptote. All right, is where is where the function is undefined. All right, so look at example one. A, one over x squared. What's the domain of that function? All reals except what? X cannot equal what value? Zero. zero. All right, what about B? x squared plus 3x plus 1 over x squared minus x minus 6. What do we have to do to find the domain of that function? Uh, find or er, yes. Uh, do the quadratic formula for the top and then if the zeros. Can you get the substitute the denominator the denominator if they equal zero? It's only this exception. The denominator cannot equal zero. So it's whatever makes this denominator equal zero. How do we figure that out, Landry? Let's factor, Let's factor it. What is it, Landry? Um, it's two minus three. So it's all reals, but x cannot equal what two values? Negative two, three. 
negative two or positive three. The domain is all reals, but X cannot equal negative two or negative three. So one of these three things happens at those values. So you're probably asking yourself, what is a vertical asymptote? What is a horizontal asymptote? Right, I'm gonna show you visually what they are, and then we're gonna start with what, how do we know if it's a hole in the graph, all right? An asymptote, vertical asymptotes are never crossed. They're never crossed. Horizontal asymptotes um, give us the end behavior. So they can be crossed. They're not always crossed. All right, so a hole in the graph would look something like this. Right? A vertical asymptote. So I'm just showing you the images, right? A vertical asymptote would be a vertical line that is not crossed. So say at x equals 1, that's a vertical asymptote. Um, so your graph may look like this and like this. <clears throat> not crossed. Something happens at that asymptote. Rarely does a function just stop at the asymptote. Normally what happens is at that vertical asymptote, it either approaches negative infinity or positive infinity. And we're going to figure out how to figure that out. <clears throat> That's a vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptotes show end behavior. So a horizontal asymptote would be like if it were at, at two. So um, maybe the graph comes up here. It may cross it, but then it tells me the further out X gets in positive infinity, the closer the Y value gets to two. So our horizontal asymptotes really tell us end behavior, what happens at the end of the graph. Does that make sense? So far, we good? That's just visually. There are rules we can look at to, to figure out what those holes and asymptotes are, all right? But look at the properties of rational graphs on the bottom of page 279. If F has a y-intercept, it happens when X is zero. That's what that is saying. Does it have to have a y-intercept? No, rational functions do not have to have a y-intercept. Do polynomials, yes. It's that constant number. Rational functions do not necessarily have a y-intercept. Can they? Yes, they can. This one does, but like if it were graphed like this one, it has no y-intercept, all right? The x-intercepts of a graph, and I believe this is on your sheet, No, yes. Um, I tell you for intercepts, look at the numerator for your x-intercepts. That's what this says. The x-intercepts of a graph of a rational function are the zeros of the numerator that are not zeros of the denominator. So what does that mean? Zeros of the numerator that are not zeros of the denominator. Negative 1 is not an x-intercept because it is a 0 of the numerator and the denominator. The only x-intercept is at positive 2. Got it? 
So the only x-intercepts for rational functions are zeros of the numerator that are not zeros of the denominator. Look at example two. It's similar to the one I just wrote on the board. I'm erase this. I need the space. Much easier to erase. Woo! Okay, look at example two. Let's find the intercepts. We're going to find the y-intercepts, and we're going to find the x-intercepts of this function. All right, the first thing we should do is we should factor the numerator. All right, so what is the numerator factored? X minus two, X plus one. Yes, all right. Now, can we calculate the y-intercept? The y-intercept is when the y-intercept is when crosses the line. Okay. How am I going to calculate it? The y-intercept is when x equals zero. Actually, I'm going to go back to the original equation because that would be zero, zero. That zero. It's your constants, negative two over negative one. So the y-intercept is at y equals two. That's your y-intercept. So it's zero, two is your y-intercept. It's just your constants, all right? Now, your x-intercepts, are zeros of the numerator that are not zeros of the denominator. So what's my x-intercept? Uh, negative two over negative one. Negative one is a zero because it is not a zero of the denominator. Make sense? Got it? I want to talk about holes in the graph next. And, and then we'll talk about vertical asymptotes. So let's look what your paper says. <clears throat> let's read holes first. Holes are zeros of the denominator and numerator. So it's when you have a zero in the numerator and the denominator except where the multiplicity of the denominator is higher than the numerator. All right, so holes. <clears throat> or when we have a zero of the denominator that is exactly the same zero of the numerator. So we're gonna have a hole at x equals negative one. Here's where we would not have a hole at x equals negative one. This is not a hole because the multiplicity in the denominator is higher than the multiplicity in the numerator. That is not a hole in the graph. This is a hole in the graph. This is not a hole in the graph. It's actually a vertical asymptote. Do you see the difference? 
<clears throat> so it's only when you can cancel out all of those like terms that you have a hole in the graph. When I can't cancel all of them out of the denominator, there is not a hole in the graph. So if I have Is there a hole in the graph? The vertical. Yes, because I can cancel both of these out and only one's left in the numerator. That is a hole in the graph. When you can cancel those terms out of the denominator. Yes? You always have to take you always have to take into consideration what is in the denominator because it changes visually the graph. Right here, there's a hole in the graph. Now, if we were to change this, is there a hole or a vertical asymptote? Now there's a vertical asymptote. Do you see the difference? I can't cancel all of them out. I can cancel them out of the numerator, but I can't cancel it out of the denominator. That's when there is a vertical asymptote. Make sense? A little bit? Okay, so holes in the graph are terms in the denominator, zeros of the denominator that can be completely canceled out by zeros in the numerator. We still have to consider them, right? But there's going to be a vertical asymptote, this is on your sheet, where there's a zero of the denominator that is not a zero of the numerator. All right, so what if I had... All right, tell me where possibly um, would I have a hole and where would I have a vertical asymptote? Okay, let's start with hole. Where's there a hole in this graph? Where is it like? At x equals negative 5. I can cancel both of them out. Are there any other holes? All right, so where are there vertical asymptotes? Yeah? 2. At x equals 2. And x equals 3. Do you see the difference with a hole and a vertical asymptote? So literally, something happens at x is 2, and it would be a hyphenated line. This would be a weird graph. I just made it up, right? And then somewhere out at negative 5, there would be a hole in the graph. But the graph would stop here. T okay, typically when you have two vertical asymptotes, it goes something like this, then it goes like this, and then it comes over here and does that. You know, it does something like that in the middle. Are we going to have to put these in a calculator? Well, you can to see them. But you don't have to to know where the holes and the vertical asymptotes are. You will not see holes on your calculator. All right, let's look at example three. Without using a calculator, describe the graph, this graph.
<clears throat> near x equals 2. All right. So let's factor this denominator. All right, so what do you know at x equals 2? What happens? Something happens at x equals 2. There is a, what is there at x equals 2? It's a zero of the denominator. That is not a zero of the numerator, so therefore there is a, it's a vertical asymptote. There's a vertical asymptote, all right? So something happens at 2 to the graph. We know there's an x-intercept at what? What value is there an x-intercept? Negative one, yes. All right, but what happens as this graph approaches two? There's something called the big little concept, all right? One over a very big number is a very small number. So if I have one over a big number, the number's getting, the result is getting smaller. So we're probably going to negative infinity. All right. One over a smaller number is a bigger number. Like one over 0 0.002 is, a, is getting a bigger number. And so we're probably going to positive infinity. All right, so just left of two, this is what I like to do with the big little concept. I like to look at numbers around two and see what happens, all right? So here's my X value, this is my Y value. For Y, I'm just gonna put big or little, all right? We know it can't equal two, but to the left of two could be like 1.9999, right? are 1.99, are 1.9, we can see what's happening. Bigger than two would be like 2.0001, 2.001, 2 2.01. All right, so let's look at this and the equation, all right? So the numerator is gonna be about three at 1.9, right? The numerator is going to be about 3. The denominator is going to be 2 times what number? 2.9. 2 times 2 times point negative point 1. 1.9 minus 2 is negative point 1. 2 times negative point 0.1 is what? Negative point 0.2. It's a small negative number. So what do you think is happening to the y value? Is it going to positive infinity or negative infinity? Negative. I think it's going to negative infinity. So, and we could do, I mean, this is just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's going to go further and further down. All right, so something, what happens at negative two? Let's, let's say what happens at negative three. That's negative two over two times negative, two times negative five, negative 10. It's gonna be a positive number. So this is coming from positive somewhere out here. It's going across at one and it's going down to negative infinity. Does that make sense? All right, now let's see what happens at 
2.0001. We can just look at 2.01. All right. At 2, that's going to be about 3 over. Now we have 2 times 0.01, which is like 0.02 or 0.2, but it's going to keep getting smaller and smaller. But it's positive, so it's going to be at positive infinity. So this is going to come up here. It, do we have another x-intercept? The answer is no. So this is not going to cross the x-axis because we don't have another x-intercept. Um, and look in your, uh, on the bottom left-hand side. I didn't even look at that. But that is similar to what we have graphed with that asymptote at 2. You see that? Got it? Everybody together? <clears throat> All right, let's look at example four. We're just going to describe the end behavior. I've already taught on holes. I like to teach holes and vertical asymptotes at the same time. Look at example four. A is f of x equals 3x minus 4 over 5 minus 2x. This is not after horizontal. Yeah, this is after horizontal asymptotes. We can't do this one yet. Um, but let's ask ourselves just vertical and holes, then I'll teach horizontal asymptotes. So really that negative two has to come out front. So is there a hole or a vertical asymptote? Is there an x-intercept? Do you see a y-intercept? Do we have a hole? Do we have a vertical asymptote? Let's answer those four questions. Do we have an x-intercept? Where are the x-intercepts? Yes. In the book, it's 3x minus 6. Is there a reason? Dag, nab it. 3x minus 6. You still want to change it? Thank you. We could have left it for. All right, is there a, an x intercept? It is. Hmm? Is it two? It's two. It's the zero of the numerator. If, it, if the zero of the numerator is two, does that make the denominator zero? It doesn't. So there's an x-intercept at negative, at positive two, not negative two. Where is there a y-intercept? The y-intercept happens when the value of x is zero. So just make x zero. And what do we have? Negative 6 over 5. It's going to be your constants. That's going to be 0. That's going to be 0. So you have a y-intercept at negative 6 fifths. Is there a hole in the graph? Do we have a 0 of the denominator that's not a 0 of the numerator? Yes? Does that also make the numerator 0? Okay, so is that a hole in the graph? Wait, so are you saying that if there's to be a hole, both have to be zero? Yes. Uh, there has to be a zero of the denominator that is also a zero in the numerator 
for it to be a hole in the graph. No holes. Is there a vertical asymptote? <clears throat> What question do I ask for a vertical asymptote? Is there a zero of the denominator that is not a zero of the numerator? And is that the case? Yes, at, at five halves, there is a vertical asymptote. <clears throat> All right, so let's just back up a minute and just review. The x-intercepts are zeros of the numerator that are not zeros of the denominator. Your y-intercepts are when you, <clears throat> you make the value of x zero. It's just your constant over your constant. Holes in the graphs are where you have a zero of the denominator that is also a zero of the numerator. And the, all the terms can be canceled out of the denominator. A vertical asymptote are the terms left in the denominator, the zeros of the denominator that are not zeros of the numerator. Graphs do not cross the vertical asymptotes. Graphs either, when they approach that vertical asymptote, they're either going to positive infinity or negative infinity from both directions. You got it? You hanging with me? So holes and vertical asymptotes are determined by the zeros of the denominator, right? Horizontal asymptotes really give us end behavior. So when you hear horizontal asymptote, you're thinking end behavior. That says as X approaches negative infinity, what's happening to Y? As X approaches positive infinity, what's happening to Y? All right, so I need you to listen. <laughs> vertical asymptotes tell us what that behavior is around the vertical asymptote, right? As the graph approaches that vertical asymptote, is it going to positive or negative infinity? Horizontal asymptote says, as X approaches negative infinity, what value is Y approaching? As X approaches negative infinity, what value is Y approaching? So horizontal asymptotes tell us, as X approaches negative infinity, what value is y approaching or as x approaches positive infinity what value is y approaching they're going to be the same value all right and whereas holes and vertical asymptotes are dictated by zeros of the denominator Horizontal asymptotes are dictated by the degrees of the polynomials. So we don't even look at zeros for horizontal asymptotes. We look at the degrees of the function. This is on your sheet by horizontal asymptotes. If the degree of the numerator, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. All right, so this would be like x squared plus 2x over x cubed plus 3x squared plus x. The degree of the numerator is 2, which is less than the degree of the denominator, which is 3. So then we have a 
horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. <clears throat> when the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, then it's y equals lead coefficient over lead coefficient. So, if I have uh, 2x squared plus 3 over negative 3x squared plus x minus 2, the degree of the numerator is 2, the degree of the denominator is 2. They are the exact same. So we look at the lead coefficients. It's 2 over negative 3. So there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 2 thirds. <clears throat> Here's what helps me remember this. If I can take this and divide it by that, then I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. If they're the same, lead over lead. If the numerator is greater than the denominator, there is no horizontal asymptote. So, if I had three x to the fourth plus x cubed over two x squared plus x, the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. There's no horizontal asymptote. There are different types of asymptotes I'm not gonna cover. There's a slant asymptote. There can be an asymptote that's like that. There can be a parabolic asymptote. It can look like that. You literally do the long division to get what your asymptote would look like. We're not going to cover those. You just say no horizontal asymptote. There's not a horizontal asymptote. It looks different. All right, so going back to example four, so left, I couldn't have left all that on there. A, we're gonna apply this. All right, so remind me. <clears throat> Numerator degree less than denominator degree, where's my horizontal asymptote? Numerator less than denominator. Y equals zero. Numerator same as denominator. Y equals lead over lead, all right? When I have a higher degree in the numerator, no horizontal asymptote. All right, so holes and vertical asymptotes driven by zeros. Horizontal asymptotes driven by the degrees. Got it? All right, so going back to A in example four. I'm going to go ahead and factor that numerator. I don't know why. I just feel like I got the need to do that. I'm not going to because we need to look at. So it's 3x minus 6 over negative 2x plus 5. We said the x-intercept. We said the y-intercept. There were no holes. There's a vertical asymptote. Is there a horizontal asymptote? Okay, Luke. Think so? Where, Luke? Would it be um, negative three halves? Negative three halves. The degrees are equal, so it's lead coefficient over lead coefficient. Okay? Let's look at B. Uh, somebody factor that denominator, x squared minus four. What does that factor? x plus 2, x minus 2. All right. Do we have an x-intercept? Okay. 
do we have an x-intercept? Elliot says no. Does anybody disagree? What are our x-intercepts? Zeros of the numerator that are not zeros of the denominator. Do we have that? Do you have a zero of the numerator that is not a zero of the denominator? Yes, Luke. Speak it out. Come on. We have an x-intercept at zero. That's the zero of the numerator. Do we have a y-intercept? What's, how do we find the y-intercept? Yes? Plug in the, you plug in zero for the x. Yes, Ryan, plug in zero for the x. What's our y-intercept? Zero. Because it would be zero over negative four, which is zero, right? Okay, do we have any holes in the graph? Any holes? No, we do not. Very good, Alexis. Do we have any vertical asymptotes? Which are, where are they, Elliot? Negative 2, 2. Yeah. Notice our asymptotes are equations, right? Verticals are x equal, horizontals are y equal. Our asymptotes are equations. Verticals are x equal, horizontals y equal. Got it? All right. Where is there a horizontal asymptote? Or is there a horizontal asymptote? <clears throat> I'll go back and rewrite the original. There is. Where, Megan? Okay, is it zero? It can't be since the x is in front of the so it's zero. Okay, what's the rule? Is the numerator less than the denominator? So there is a vertical asymptote. How can you have a vertical asymptote? Has to be at zero. Doesn't it? No. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Horizontal asymptotes at zero. Okay. Look at the graph. Everybody look at the graph. Everybody look at the graph. What does our horizontal asymptote tell us? Remind me what the horizontal asymptote tells us. Does, does it say it cannot cross it? I know, I, make the, I, make, I just made the same mistake. Can you cross a horizontal asymptote? Yes. Can you cross a vertical asymptote? No. Because horizontal asymptotes can be places where um, it is defined. But horizontal asymptotes say, look guys, as x approaches negative infinity, what value is y approaching? Your horizontal asymptote, zero. As x approaches positive infinity, what value is y approaching? Zero. So it can be defined. They can be crossed. I don't like that about horizontal asymptotes, but that is the way it is. All right, let's do the last one. All right. C. 2x cubed minus x over x cubed plus 1. All right. X-intercept. All 
Okay, because we have cubic functions, we're not going to do x-intercepts. We could do y-intercepts. What's the y-intercept? Hold on. Okay. Plug in zero. So it would be zero minus zero. Uh, it would be zero over one, which is zero. So that's the y-intercept. which also has to be the x-intercept, right? <laughs> All right, now, so that also has to be the y-intercept. What is, are, is there a hole in the graph? Is there a vertical asymptote? Is there a horizontal asymptote? Okay. Okay, let's talk about the zeros. What makes, the only thing that makes this zero Zero. Has to be zero. That's the zero of the numerator. Zero makes that one one, so there's no. All right, so what are the zeros of the denominator? There's only one. Negative one. Negative one. It's the only one that would make it zero. Positive one wouldn't because positive one cubed is. So there is no vertical. There's no hole, but there is a vertical. At. Negative one. X equals negative one. Where's there a horizontal asymptote? Um. They're equal, so you take what? When they're equal, lead coefficient, over lead, coefficient. lead coefficient over lead coefficient. So it's at y equals two. All right, look at the graph. I don't see the graph. Ah, the graph is on the next page. That is exactly what happens. Do you see your vertical asymptote? Do you see that vertical asymptote? It's this one with the wiggles. It's figure 4.4-9. You see your x and y intercept at zero. There's also another one at like a fraction, a negative fraction, which would make sense. We just didn't set equal zero and solve it. And you see your horizontal asymptote. That is what the graph approaches as x approaches negative infinity and positive infinity.